Hi everyone. Today I'm going to read you a story called The Last Stop on Market Street. This is a story about a little boy named CJ and his grandma and everything they discover as they ride the bus together around their beautiful neighborhood. CJ calls his grandma Nana. So I like this book for that reason because that's what my grandchildren call me. <laughs> it's also a beautiful story. And as always, I love the illustrations. This is for Luna and her two grandmas and for Nana. CJ pushed through the church doors, skipped down the steps. The outside air smelled like freedom, but it also smelled like rain which freckled CJ's shirt and dripped down his nose. He ducked under his Nana's umbrella saying, how come we gotta wait for the bus and all this wet? Trees get thirsty too, his Nana told him. Don't you see the big one drinking through a straw? CJ looked for a long time, but he never saw a straw. From the bus stop, he watched the water pool on the flower petals, watched rain patter against the windshield of a nearby car. His friend Colby climbed in, gave CJ a wave and drove off with his dad. Nana, how come we don't got a car? Boy, what do we need a car for? We got a bus that breathes fire and old Mr. Dennis, who always has a trick for you. The bus creaked to a stop in front of them. It sighed and sagged, and the doors swung open. Look, at there is a dragon on the side of the bus. What's that I see, Mr. Dennis asked. He pulled a coin from behind CJ's ear and placed it in his palm. Nana laughed her deep laugh and pushed CJ along. They sat right up front. The man across the way was tuning his guitar. An old woman with curlers had butterflies in a jar. Nana gave everyone a great big smile and said, good afternoon. She made sure that CJ did the same. Sounds like Nana was teaching CJ about good manners. It's nice to smile at people when you greet them. The bus lurched forward and stopped. Nana hummed as she knit. How come we always gotta go here after church, CJ said. Miguel and Colby never have to go nowhere. I feel sorry for those boys, she told him. They'll never get a chance to meet Boo Boo or the Sunglass Man. And I hear Trixie got herself a brand new hat. CJ stared out the window, feeling sorry for himself. He watched cars zip by on either side, watched a group of boys hop curbs on bikes. A man climbed aboard with a spotted dog. CJ gave up his seat. How come that man can't see? Boy, what do you know about seeing, Nana told him. Some people watch the world with their ears. That's a fact, their noses too, the man said, sniffing at the air. That's mighty fine perfume you're wearing today, ma'am. Nana squeezed the man's hand and laughed her deep laugh. Two older boys got on. CJ watched as they moved on by and stood in back. Sure wish I had one of those, he said. Nana sat down her knitting. What for? You got the real live thing sitting across from you. Why don't you ask that man if he'll sing us a song? CJ didn't have to. The guitar player was already plucking strings and beginning to sing. To feel the magic of music, the blind man whispered, I like to close my eyes. Nana closed hers too. 
so did CJ and the spotted dog. And in the darkness, the rhythm lifted CJ out of the bus and out of the city. He saw sunset colors swirling over crashing waves. He saw a family of hawks slicing through the sky, saw the old woman's butterflies dancing free in the light of the moon. CJ's chest grew full and he was lost in the sound and the sound gave him the feeling of magic. The song ended and CJ opened his eyes. Everyone on the bus clapped, even the boys in back. Nana glanced at the coin in CJ's palm. CJ dropped it in the man's hat. Last stop on Market Street, Mr. Dennis called. CJ looked around as they stepped off the bus. Crumbling sidewalks and broken down doors, graffiti tagged windows and boarded up stores. He reached for Nana's hand. How come it's always so dirty over here? She smiled and pointed at the sky. Sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you're a better witness for what's beautiful. CJ saw the perfect rainbow arching over their soup kitchen. He wondered how his Nana always found beautiful where he never even thought to look. He looked all around them again, at the bus rounding the corner out of sight and the broken street lamp still lit up bright and the stray cat shadows moving across the wall. When he spotted their familiar faces in the window, he said, I'm glad we came. He thought his Nana might laugh, her deep laugh, but she didn't. She patted him on the head and told him, me too, CJ, now come on. Looks to me like CJ and his Nana are working at the soup kitchen to feed people that don't have enough to eat. See, they have chef's hats on back there or nets over their head. The end. It's a beautiful story, isn't it? I love the pictures and I love the fact that CJ and his Nana do a special thing after church every week. They go and help people that are less fortunate than them. That's a really good feeling. I hope you guys enjoyed this story. I did. I wonder if any of you have ever ridden on a city bus like that. Looks like fun to me. Have a great rest of your day. I'll be back to read to you soon.